Uh, good afternoon to you all, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys are enjoying the conference so far. I'm Geet Kukure, and I have the Vice President and General Manager of WSO2's IDG and Access Management business. And I want to welcome you here today to the IAM track here at WSO2Con 2024. We have three sessions today, ending up with a panel discussion consisting of four of our awesome customers, and one more presentation tomorrow, and I'll talk about that as we go along. Um, so getting right to it, digital transformation. If you are here at WSU2Con, you most likely eat, drink, sleep digital transformation. You may not realize it, but most of the decisions you make on a day-to-day -day life, at, from, at least from a business standpoint, at your organization, at business, at your work, you are contributing to your organization's digital transformation journeys. Right? So let's take a step back to look at what are we really doing when we talk about digital transformation. Right? Step one, the digital transformation, it's the process of digitization. Right? You're basically converting your organization from being analog into digital, right? creating a series of systems of record. Next step is about integrating all of these systems of record with each other, and by doing so, creating a series of domain APIs and domain services. And next step, as we call that digitalization, you'd use enterprise integration in this step. And next, you'll start thinking about, okay, how do we get these domain APIs and domain services over to our developers so that they can create experiences out of this? And that's when you realize, hey, we need API management. So you create, you set up API management, and by doing so, expose experience APIs to your developers who in turn utilize this APIs and create experiences. These experiences could be for your employees, experiences for your consumers or citizens, depending on your depending on organization's focus, and experiences for your enterprise customers, your B2B partners, your B2B suppliers, your API buyers, and so on and so forth. So all this work when you're doing from, that you're doing from a digital transformation perspective, this digital transformation journey, will not make sense or really reap the benefits that you want it to unless you ensure those who are utilizing these or experiences, those who are consuming these experiences, are who they say they are. And that is where access management comes into play. Right? For employees, is workforce identity access management, or B2E IAM. For your consumers or your citizens, B2C or, or custom IAM for your consumers or citizens, B2C, G2C, Cyan. And most importantly, or something that is much more emerging today, is Cyan for your B2B partners or enterprise customers or the users of your B2B partners, suppliers, API buyers, and so on and so forth. And for all the APIs that bring all of these together is access management for APIs. So these where access management meets your digital transformation journeys. And with the progression of technology in the industry, in the world, there is, comes this point where we need to start reimagining what this digital transformation and identity and access management needs to be. Right? For example, I'm sure you're familiar with Neuralink. Elon Musk's company that is trying to convert uh, what, neural messages into ones and zeros. Sounded some, like something out of science fiction, out of our science fiction movie, but they are already doing human trials. They've already started implants in brains. They are quite getting ahead of things. Ignore the pun. Um, but think of a scenario where your electric car, let's call it Nissan, one of our customers. Uh, Nissan electric car realizes that your tires are getting worn out. And it notifies you, all this is happening, communications coming right directly to your brain, to your thoughts. And you think, OK, what's the recommended tire? What's the closest supplier from where you can get the vehicle, or get the tires, rather? And then you'll choose, OK, use this credit card ending in 444. Um, 
from Bank of America, and you give authorization to your car to make the purchase on your behalf, and the, then the suppliers come visit you and visit your house or workplace, get access, and you give access to your vehicle, they replace the tires and they go off. All of this through neural messages, you're thinking it and it happens. Now think of that scenario, that end-to-end -end customer journey, right? how every single entity in that interaction has to be digitally transformed to enable this. Right? This is where the world is headed. Every business, every entity, every organization needs to be digitally transformed to enable such an interaction. And you can also think and you realize how important and how ingrained identity is and authorization, access management is in that journey. Right? We talk about the metaverse. Yes, the hype has reduced when you talk about the metaverse. However, especially in a scenario where it's an enterprise that's completely globally dispersed, the metaverse or the concept around metaverse may, still stands true in my opinion. Right? When you're interacting with your colleagues around the world discussing very sensitive uh, details about your business and strategy, and you're having this conversation with an avatar or your a digital double, you see the importance of access management, ensuring the person you're having this conversation is with is who he or she or they say they are. Right? Of course, Neuralink and the metaverse um, hasn't still affected our lives. If there's one technology that has, that is artificial intelligence. And I'm not going to talk about you know, GPT and all of that, but just think about the AI-driven threats or AI-powered threats. AI-powered phishing attacks, bot attacks, right? And AI-generated deep fakes that are trying to get through all our biometrics uh, enforcement, security, right? Or AI, as much as it's helping us advance technology, it's also creating that much more threats and that we organize, our organizations, especially in, in, as part of our digital transformation journeys, have to protect our organizations from, right? So, what I'm getting to, is, ladies and gentlemen, is that digital transformation and identity access management are two technologies that cannot live on its own. They need to come together. Yes, something very complex when it comes to our enterprises, large enterprises where two completely different organizations are part of the organizations own API management integration or digital transformation and identity access management. But we, and yourselves, as digital and technology leaders, need to understand this and help bring all of this converge identity and digital transformation to improve your organization's journey and ensure that digital transformation journey is that much more successful. And there are benefits from this as well, right? If you think about it, we talk about workforce identity access management, right? That's about single sign-on, MFA, you know, using pass keys for a workforce. The idea is that you reduce friction doing login, and by doing so, you increase, improve security posture, right? But how does it help your business? It improves employee productivity and overall employee sentiment, right? From a SIAM perspective, right, we heard Macarios talk about, you know, how they are trying to create omnichannel, seamless use experiences across all the various channels and properties around the world, right? And they're trying to provide personalized experiences. So when your identity meets your digital transformation journey, you're now able to create that omnichannel use experience and use all of that integration and the data to provide personalized experience. By doing this, you're increasing conversion of your consumer's retention, loyalty, and by doing so, improving organization revenue. B2B, now this is an area that you know, organizations, have, so many of our customers have B2B use cases, but have been looking for a solution to provide better access for their B2B partners, customers, when they access their B2B SaaS platforms, right? So with B2B SAM, the idea is in, uh, making onboarding that much more simple, seamless, right? Providing delegated administration so your customers, partners themselves can administer and, and change and modify how their users authenticate into your platform, creating a frictional experience. And by doing so, you are reducing your uh, overheads and increasing your time to market because onboarding customers become 
that much more faster and easier. And then by doing so, you're also increasing your revenue potential. And finally, for all the plumbing across the entire organization, your APIs, API access management becomes super vital to improve overall security posture, and by doing so, helps your organization reduce risk. Right? So we had WS2, uh, we are a unique organization providing technologies for your entire digital transformation journey from API management integration to identity access management. Right? And as an organization, our goal is to create, te create technology that helps you provide awesome experiences for your users. And we, as the identity access management business, believe that every user deserves experiences that are seamless and secure. Right? Seamless and secure, two topics that have always been at loggerheads. But today, the, the, where the world is headed, with all the threats, all the security threats, the experiences have to be both seamless and secure at the same time. Right? So we create our technologies from identity server. Um, Sanjo spoke about our products. The identity server is a flagship uh, IAM product. Uh, available self uh, download, you can self manage, or, or some customers or some partners will manage it for you. And on the other front, we have Asgardio, which is a multi tenanted uh, SaaS. Uh, Asgardio has come through a very long journey. Uh, it is now feature parity with Ident Server and our entire IAM platform. Uh, it's deployed in North America and Europe, and we are open to deploy around the world uh, depending with the increase of traction. And we have some awesome customers that are starting to adopt Ascardio as well. It's a multi-tenant SaaS. And then there's Private Identity Cloud, which is a single-tenanted SaaS deployment that we do for a particular customer. We are getting a lot of interest for Private Identity Cloud from our existing identity server customers who want to get out of managing and maintaining uh, identity server. And for some other customers who want to go to the cloud but prefer a private, uh, dedicated deployment so that they have that much more control and isolation. So that's another deployment option that we have available. Um, and the idea is that we want to take on the complexities related to identity access management. We'll take on the complexity, making it simple and easier for you and your developers to create those awesome experiences, se seamless and secure experiences for your users. Right? Having said that, um, we are quite excited about some of the latest improvements that we have made available uh, across the platform. I'm going to quickly go through this. I'm not sure if you are aware about, uh, of all these changes that we have made. Um, so the first thing, so we, we love our developers. So a lot of changes. We have made in latest uh, releases of our product is to improve developer experience. So we've considerably improved the UI and UX of the product. If you're familiar with the previous versions of Ident Server, you'll agree that this is a world of a difference from a UI UX perspective. I see a lot of nods there, yeah. Uh, so we bought in, uh, introduce a bunch of out of the box application templates so your developers can onboard your applications and get started um, uh, quite fast. Uh, then we've introduced more and more authentication methods, and we keep on adding, keep on adding even more authentication methods. We are open to feedback. If you all have any method that you want onboarded, we can make that happen. Um, so this is an interesting one. Uh, it's it's ability for your developers using low code and no code to visualize the login flow. So they build it. They can drag and drop predefined flows to build out the login flow. And, and also see what that is in a local and in a code manner as well, right? Uh, we have considerably improved the branding experience. No more of dealing with CSS files and all of that fun stuff. Uh, we have a lot of capabilities from a branding perspective that on the console itself that your, you and your developers can utilize. Um, we have optimized uh, our capabilities from an API Access management perspective, we spoke, we spoke about the importance of API access management. We've brought in that much more, a lot more features, specif specifically support for native scopes, or native support for scopes. So you can uh, you know, uh, address this with uh, the APIs, you can uh, assign the scopes, and so on and so forth, to make that API uh, interaction that much more safer. Right? Um, so this is a feature that we're actually very excited about. We're not seeing as many vendors provide offering this, and that's a standard that's been built 
to support this, uh, and we are hoping to go back and contribute, it, contribute to it. So you see, you get on many mobile applications and you're trying to authenticate, it opens a web browser. You end up authenticating there and you get redirected back to the mobile app, providing a very disconnected uh, experience and, uh, and potential risk as well. So with our in-app authentication API, your mobile apps can have um, native authentication on the mobile app itself, no redirections. Uh, and B2B SIAM capabilities, uh, this is an area we are very excited about uh, because today we, are, we have, we believe, uh, we have some features that are ahead of the market uh, talk, uh, in comparison to some of our competitors. I'm not going to go into this in depth because Johan, who will be speaking right after, uh, he'll be talking about B2B SAM. I don't want to steal his thunder. Uh, but the idea is if you have any sort of B2B SaaS platform that you make available to your B2B partners, customers, you can use our capabilities to make that experience onboarding, uh, delegate administration, helping them plug in their enterprise IDPs, uh, branding, all of those capabilities can be made available with our B2B SAM uh, capabilities. Um, so FAPI, or Support Financial Grade APIs, um, it comes from the open banking world to, and goes one step further to make your API authentication secure. Uh, so we have support for or first class support for FAPI 1.0 with support for uh, OAuth 2.0 and uh, uh, as well. So uh, you can, this helps, well it comes from the open banking uh, world, however, it's about securing you what your organization consider, considers to be high value APIs. So it doesn't mean that you need to be from a financial enterprise. So if there are any APIs you consider to be high value, you can use this to secure those APIs even further. Um, Sanjo spoke about uh, the advancements and, and improvements we've done uh, to support post-quantum um, safety from a cryptography standpoint. The idea here is that um, our standard normal encryption may be uh, at risk of being decrypted using quantum computing. Yes, quantum computing is not a thing today, but there's this concept of store now, decrypt later. So you, you may not realize it, but you are actually, have, you might be you know, at risk in the future. So we are uh, basically supporting our customers with our latest version of our product to, to basically uh, bring in post-quantum safe cryptography to encrypt your inbound TLS. Right? So you'll be available with our latest versions of our product. So, so these are some of the features that we have released. And um, today I want to quickly announce a couple of features that, um, uh, quick announcements from our standpoint that are available from today onwards. Uh, first of all, we have gone through the process of unifying the code base that goes across all three of our deployment options, Identity Server, Escadio, and Private Identity Cloud. So they're running on a singular code base. Uh, as far as your developers are concerned, with the, whichever deployment option they use, they'll have a similar and seamless developer experience. And for you, you may want to start on-prem today, but in the future want to move to the cloud, you can rest assured that process will be that much more seamless because we are running the same code base across all these deployment options. Right? Um, AI assistive features, Sanjay will kind of give a glimpse of some of the features that we have brought in. I just want to take you through some of them. The first one, um, is AI-assisted branding. So the idea here is that you, know, you go to our, we have the new branding capabilities on our console, so we've taken that one step further. Uh, this video plays. Yes, um, so you, you'd, you'd basically onboard your application and you have the branding feed AI uh, capabilities. You go to your website, you copy and paste the URL to your website Right, uh, so this is an NFT uh, website, and you basically paste that uh, on the Asgardio console, and Asgardio will, will use AI to build out uh, a login flow, just, just so that we sped up the video. Um, uh, and basically this will es essentially brand your login page and all the secondary pages for your login experience right down to your email templates. So it helps your developers get, fast, get started that much more faster. And once the AI assistive branding is done, your developers can go further and customize it, uh, the, the layouts from the colors and so on and so forth, they can brand it even further. This feature is now available um, at a super org level. 
Uh, we believe with B2B, there might be use cases where we may need to have it at sub-organization level. We are looking to make that, enable that in the future as well. Uh, that's AI-assisted branding. Uh, so I showed the low-code, no-code login flow editor visualizing, uh, to, to visualize your um, login flow. So we brought in AI to assist in building out the login flow. Right? So the idea is um, you, you onboard your application, you go to uh, the console where you build out your login flow, and you will use natural language to type out something like, hey, uh, build me a login flow with username and password as first factors. Um, and set up Google as a social login option in the same step. And if the if right, so conditional authentication. If the user is authenticating or logging in from a different IP, right, step up to invoke or require a TOTP. So you type that out in natural language, and Ascardio, with the assistance of um, AI, will build out that entire login flow for you, ladies and gentlemen. You see, username and password set up. Uh, signing with Google uh, available there, and most importantly, the co conditional authentication, the if statements, all the code built in um, using AI. Right? So these are two features we are very excited about. They are available today on Ascardio. We hope to make it available on As Identity Server very soon. Um, of course, these are features to, to empower our developers, the developers who we love. Uh, we are also in the uh, works to uh, release some features to improve the security posture as well uh, using AI-assisted capabilities. Um, yeah, and quickly uh, to take you through some of the high-level roadmaps, something you can, what you should just look out for very soon. Uh, so here we are, build, we are building a low-code, no-code visual editor to basically orchestrate your registration flows just like the login flows for your registration flows. Uh, I, I expect this might be an AI-assisted feature very soon as well. Um, we're hoping to bring in a lot more third-party integrations, uh, and we are open to customer feedback for any of these integrations that we should uh, uh, prioritize as well. Um, and so I spoke about FARP 1.0. So there is another spec called FARP 2.0, uh, which goes one step further one notch further to secure those high-valued APIs or the financial-grade APIs. Uh, we see that the implementation of FARP2 is that a bit more um, easier than compared to FARP1.0. Uh, so we'll be uh, supporting uh, rich authorization requests, or RA, grant management, and DPOP as part of uh, our efforts here. Uh, we believe this will help with some of our consent management capabilities, which brings me to my next slide, is consent everywhere. Uh, we, consent is such an important thing. Uh, Makario talk, uh, answered one of the questions uh, from, a, from one of the uh, audience members about you know, getting into uh, the chatbot uh, and, and you knew having given consent for the chatbot to actually start communicating with you. So we want to enable you, our customers, to set up consent management or consent requests anywhere in your customer flow and interaction with your customers and consumers and users uh, with these first-party applications or third-party applications. And a lot of our work with FARP and 1.0 and FARP 2.0 will help us make this available already, uh, make it available uh, much faster. And we already have some capabilities from a privacy consent standpoint, but we believe these, this concept of consent everywhere will take this a step further. And with consent everywhere comes providing your users with the ability to self-service across in all of, uh, well, self-service when it comes to consent as well, to uh, see what the consent they have provided, revoke consent, and basically manage the consent that they have provided. So that's also a lot of, we're putting a lot of work to improve those experience there. Um, four more changes, improvements from a platform and architecture standpoint. Uh, this one I'm actually we are very, I'm quite excited about personally. Um, so customers love Identity Server because you can extend it to basically anything you want with the extension points and the APIs that are available. We are now taking that a step further with our capabilities so event, uh, and extend, for events and extensions, where you'll be able to write your extensions, not, use, not just with Java, with any language, and deploy it anywhere and basically call that as an API during the authentication or authorization flows. Um, so the eventing capabilities will be available in a couple of months, and the support for extensions very soon. It will help identity server, but we believe this is completely going to change 
our SaaS offerings, providing Asgardio and Private Anti Cloud a lot more flexibility than, than any of our competitors are able to provide in the market. Uh, so we're quite excited about this. Um, yes, and uh, if Iden Server customers would agree that Iden Server um, has become a bit of a heavyweight uh, in its category. Um, so we are looking to improve the product. We are going to the core of the uh, engines to make it a lot more lightweight. By doing so, it will help uh, reduce the resource usage on your stand, uh, for, for you, Iden Server customers. It obviously helps us uh, as we run Asgardio and Private Entity Cloud as well. Um, we, are, we are working towards providing support for Java 21. Uh, we should have that very soon. And finally, um, we've heard from, from our customers, uh, the experience of migrating has been um, interesting, uh, to say the least. So uh, we are hoping to improve this experience uh, from going from a migration versus, or, or moving from migrations or requiring migrations to making the experience more like an upgrade, like installing a WC2 update. Uh, we hope to support this from Ident Server 7 onwards. It's, I, 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 we, we've been talking about this, but it's a very complex thing to make available, but we are working hard. Uh, we are a team dedicated to make this happen. Right? Um, of course, you have the option of moving to our cloud services where you don't have to wor worry about migration, but for any customer who has to be on on-prem, we hope to make this available for you. Right? Finally, uh, as with everything in life, uh, and as with uh, digital transformation, IAM2 is a journey, and we uh, here at WSO2's ID and Access Management Business are committed to supporting you, our customers, with uh, your digital transformation and identity-led digital transformation journeys. Um, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your time.